Hey everyone, Katrill here. I wasn't home when this video was filmed, but I am home for the voiceover recordings. So I'm just here to say that when I had to mow the lawn as a kid, Dad didn't have any of this fancy equipment. None of these sunshades or big mowers that got everything done faster. And I'm a little bit jealous. On the bright side, Mom and Dad do all of the mowing now, and I can't complain about that. Alright, I'll give Dad the voiceover chair back. Enjoy the rest of the video. Hey, we get a lot of requests for rear finish mower. Have you ever had a rear finish mower? Have, have you ever had experience with one? Today, we're trying one. Let's get started. This is the first time that Christy or I have had a chance to use a rear finish mower. We did use this one a week or two before on Johnny 2. We didn't have the camera out that evening. We thought we'd wait till it was a brighter day and we both needed the extra experience before we provided any opinions. We're gonna run this mower in our front yard over this big ugly hill that we have in the front and then we're gonna do some trim work to see how well we can handle it trimming around trees and other obstacles. You'll notice I have six 42 pound weights on the front heavy hitch bracket. With some off camera testing that seemed like about the right amount. Without front ballast it was difficult to turn as the front wheels wanted to slide. As we go through this episode you'll see that we're sort of learning as we go. Specifically items like the lift mechanism, allowing it to float appropriately. We're by no means experts on this mower, but we do think we've learned enough to be helpful in your decision process. We get a lot of different things to evaluate about a rear finish mower. Uh, some of them are about the mower itself, this particular unit. Some things are just about having a rear finish mower. Uh, just a lot of different things uh, to evaluate. So stick with us. It's going to be lots of things to talk about. You know the first thing I want to mention is just how nice and shady it is in here. This particular canopy is from Deer. It's permanently attached. I say permanently, I mean obviously you can take it off, but it's not easy to take off. I've got another canopy from Artillion, Artillion.com, that is removable. And I really like that approach. You know, when I'm out here in the middle, I don't want to remove it. For a lot of things that we do, we don't want to remove, but it's really nice when you're close to trees or anytime you need to put the rops down, you can just take that canopy off and get it out of the way temporarily. So for that, reason I would actually recommend a removable canopy like the Artillion, but I would say overall that I'm really enjoying having a canopy. The shade really helps a lot. Everybody talks about how high the ROPS is, and that's true. We're here in the mid-afternoon. Uh, the canopy does a lot more good in the middle of the afternoon than it does later in the evening or early in the morning. That's not the mower. Let's get back to the mower. This particular mower is a Rhino model FA613. I have no idea what those numbers mean. I don't know what F means. I don't know. I think F means finish. I don't know what A means. I think 6 means 6 foot, and 13 means it's not my lucky day. FA613, I really don't know what it means. This mower is a 72 inch mower. You know, one thing I really notice about it first thing is it's very quiet. And I don't know if that's because it's just mounted in the rear versus right under me here and uh, you know I don't know whether that's rear finish versus mid mount or if that's this particular mower. It runs very quietly. Uh, I, I find that to be a, a tremendous advantage of what we got here. Uh, Christy and I have made an adjustment or two on it um, and it's it's doing a really good job mowing. Uh, the last time I mowed I had it set too short, uh, set to mow too closely. It didn't handle my hill very well. I just I just didn't like that mowing quality at all. It's easy to adjust and uh, so we'll show you how to do that. It's kind of greasy Christy. But it's nice to keep this all well lubricated. But this is how you do the height adjustment. Uh, you can see these different sized uh, collars and you just move them from below the below this to above it to change you know to make it go lower. And you've got all different sizes so you should have a, an infinite you know height adjustment in that in that regard. So we made that adjustment earlier and raised it just a little bit. It helps a lot. 
These two shields come off real easily so that you can get to the spindles and get to the belt, but there's really no need to get to the spindles or belt because you don't have to grease this lawnmower. Less greasing is good for Tim. Yeah, uh, so these are totally sealed bearings for each of the spindles, no grease necessary. One of the things we've been trained to look for in a, a three-bladed mower like this is how the center spindle is driven. On the cheapest of mowers, you will see that the gearbox directly drives the center spindle. On this mower and on the 1025R mid-mount mower, you will see that the gearbox just drives a pulley here and the center spindle is driven back here with a separate pulley. The benefit of that is if you hit something immovable with that center blade, you have no risk of tearing up your gearbox. The belt's gonna slip, something else is gonna give rather than your gearbox tearing up. So that's a very positive uh, feature on this mower. There's a mid roller here in the front to help prevent scalping. You can see the two big wheels here. Now, unlike a mid-mount mower, this finished mower is meant to, to float on its own wheels. So it's not held up. If you've used any sort of mid-mount mower, like a, on a subcompact tractor or a garden tractor, the gauge wheels on the deck are not supposed to carry the full weight of the deck. They're supposed to be adjusted so that they're a quarter or three-eighths of an inch above the actual ground level. You can do that adjustment on concrete, and that way you can get them fairly close. It doesn't matter if they turn while you're mowing. You just don't want them carrying the full weight for standard mowing. In contrast, this mower is fully intended to set on these four gauge wheels. So you let the three-point hitch all the way down. You make sure you have your... Uh, top link extended far enough so that there's plenty of, of room in here to allow it to, to flex downward if you're going over a slope. You put all of the weight on the mower and allow it to float on its own. In addition to that, we've got a roller here in the front that helps with scalping. Um, so you use all of that together and you've got a relatively scalp-free approach. I can make it scalp, so it's not perfect uh, it doesn't have as many rollers on it as some of the more expensive mowers that we've looked at, but this is a, a pretty good approach when it comes to scalping. Now there's some interesting adjustment right here. Uh, this, uh, the lift links have several holes in it that you can move the lift link forward and back. I'm not exactly sure why you want to do that at this point. I don't know that I've seen that type of an adjustment on most three-point mowers. Well, let's talk a little bit about how a rear finish mower attaches to the tractor. It uses a standard three-point hitch connection that's been around for probably, I don't know, 80 years. I think old man Ferguson, uh, the old Ferguson tractors years and years ago uh, invented, he invented the three-point hitch and it's still compatible today. That's one of the advantages of a rear finish mower is between the PTO and the three-point hitch, the compatibility goes back years and years and years. This will work on almost any tractor. You can put this on a Ford 8N and mow with it. Uh, you can put it on a lot of different tractors uh, that may not have capabilities that you would think to, that could mow your yard, but with a rear finish mower, you have that opportunity. Now this particular one does not support a quick hitch. And the way we're sitting here now, you can kind of see why. We're in a spot where the rear of the mower is kind of held up a little bit by the terrain. This mechanism right here allows the top link to push backwards freely. So that allows the mower to flex up and down, and it gives a, a, a lot of flexibility in the, the way the top link is connected. I'd prefer to have one that's quick hitch compatible, uh, especially since for me, I would be hooking and unhooking this particular mower quite often because I wouldn't leave it on between mowing. Now, you might have a, an older tractor that all you want to do with it is mow. You hook this mower up to your tractor and you're going to leave it hooked up all summer. This could be potentially a very cost-effective approach to get a 72-inch, or they even make an 84-inch version of this mower. So I think it's 60, 72, 84. Uh, they may be an inch or two different uh, in, in each one of those. Okay, for our next test, we're going to take this rock and we're going to throw it down right in front of the mower and we're going to see how the mower handles it. I don't think so, Tim. Really? Okay. Well, no, actually we found this rock over by one of our utility posts 
and I think we found it with a blade. So yeah, that's not a, that's not a good thing. No, this mower is not meant to mow rocks. I haven't found a mower yet that's meant to mow rocks. Let me know if you know of one. Okay, so let's talk about some other aspects that we've noticed with a finished mower. The mower's behind you, it's not right up under you, and that makes a huge difference in your ability to, to handle the mower and, and how it's gonna react to different situations. One example is when you're trying to trim around a tree. If you wanna go around a tree, yes, there's some complaints about a subcompact tractor not being able to turn tight enough to do good tight trimming, uh, but that's much, much worse when you're talking about a rear finish mower because as your tractor goes around a tree, your mower tends to, to, to swing out the opposite direction of what you want to go. So we find it much more difficult, or at least much more difficult for our level of experience to be able to mow around trees and do other trim work. So you have to learn tricks like how to back into something, how to kind of back your way around a tree. You just, you just have to do things differently. Over time, you might get used to that. I'd be interested to hear in your comments below. Is, is that something that you get used to handling over time if you've got a rear finish mower? Or do you find it always a, a little bit more difficult than a mid-mount mower or a front-mount mower, for instance, to mow around things? Okay, I just made a major discovery and I'm kind of embarrassed about it. I was seeing that there was no side-to-side -side flex at all in this mower. Uh, and I, I got to wondering, well, why is that? And then I realized that there are pins that were locking that in. And once I removed those pins, each lift arm has a degree of flex in it. I realize now that's what it's made for. Tim, read the manual. Actually, I didn't read the manual. I figured that out on my own. Do I get bonus points for that, guys? Now we have some side-to-side -side flex. You can actually see it behaving differently. I like it. Now while we're watching the mower trim here, I want to share another advantage that I discovered off camera. The ability to lift the mower really high, say a foot or 16 inches, maybe even 20 inches off the ground, proved very useful uh, when I was mowing back in the woods. We're working on and preparing a trail all the way back to the tower property. I was able to mow most of it with this finish mower. But I wouldn't have been able to mow it with a mid-mount mower because there are areas where there are still logs crossing the trail and other obstacles where I just wouldn't have felt comfortable taking a mid-mount finish mower. Now back to the trimming. With the appropriate practice and patience, you can actually trim closer to items, as you can see here, than what you could do with a mid-mount mower. It's not easy and it's not fast, but you can get the job done. Okay, so after that practice there, I think I was able to trim better than I previously thought I could. I think it might take Christy a little bit more practice to be able to do that like that, but I went into one side of the tree and then I would swing it toward the tree and then I would come back out, go into the other side of the tree, swing it back in that way, and I was able to get pretty well around most of these trees. It's too much thinking for me. You know, I kind of like to have to think a little bit. When I mow, I want it to be relaxing. So thinking and relaxing are not... I want to think about something besides mowing. Yeah, I understand. Like, you know, organizing the clock. You know, there are different types of people, aren't there? There, I mean, yeah. there, there are p types of people that they want to get out and have to concentrate a little bit while they mow. And other type of people who just, I want to think about something totally different while I'm mowing. I just want it to be mindless. I mean, I understand that. Uh, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. It's evening now. Let's talk about cut quality. What do you think of the cut quality of this? I think it cuts really nicely. Yeah, it does. I, I, I had the same opinion. Yeah. And I like that it's back behind me. Um, I'm not getting all that in my face. I usually get a lot of allergies when I mow. And yep. this is really nice. And I also realize that it doesn't shoot to the side. So I don't have to worry about going around the garden and stuff. It's, it's all behind you. Yep. Yeah, the rear discharge makes that nice, and, yeah. and, and even in a, a, a tailwind or something, you don't have any issue because it's shooting so far behind you that it doesn't blow back at all. But that does bring up one issue for me. It's so far behind me. I have to constantly look when I'm turning to make sure I'm not going to hit something. I think anybody would. I mean, it's a long way back there. I, I like it underneath my the tractor probably better because I don't have to worry about it hitting anything. <laughs> 
I really think that's uh, that's probably our summary when we're talking about for, for our opinions of a mid mount versus a rear mount. If you have the opportunity to get a mid mount mower, uh, and if you're going to mow with your tractor, that's the way that's the way we would recommend mowing. It, it, just turning around yeah. stuff, you're you're not as apt to hit something. Uh, it, you don't have to be constantly worried about, well, how far is that swinging out there behind me? I think that would be our recommendation. But this mower is well suited for someone that has an older tractor right. or a tractor that doesn't have any ability to have a mid-mount mower. It's a cost-effective way to add a six or seven foot mower to an existing older right. tractor. exactly. Since it's wider than the tractor, I'm having a hard time judging how far out it is and I overlap too much. Tisk tisk. We'll just take more practice. Yeah, you ought to be able to get onto that. Plus, the grass right now is kind of scraggly. It's been dry and so some of it's taller than others and sometimes it's very hard to see, you know, what you've mowed before and so I'm going by my tire tracks and it's a good point. This is not spring grass, but on the other hand, it's right. not totally dead grass either. So this was a, a, a fair test of the mower. It wasn't that bad. Right. You know, we had some last summer when we were mowing that really wasn't a fair we test. We were just Th mowing weeds. Yeah, this had enough growth to, to, to be a fair test of the mower. It's just right. not that heavy, thick spring grass that, that we see when, you know, right after winter. One other thing I thought about is it's so quiet. I put my isotones in, but really all I was hearing was the tractor engine. Yeah. To the point that several times I looked back to make sure I was cutting something. Yeah, it is very quiet. Yeah. Uh, much quieter than a mid mower or the front mower on Vinny. Yeah. The the mid mower just seems like you have this roar right here to where I don't even listen to music because I have to turn the music up loud, and it's just too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, I don't listen either. Um, so there there is some debate. People say, well, it's easier to hook on to a, a rear mount mower than a center mount mower. Well, I think that debate is a little old now. Um, now that we have the Auto Connect deck, we can right. drive right over the deck and we're ready to go. I think if you have a manual remove deck, if that's the option you're looking at, for instance, you're looking at not a John Deere tractor, you're looking at some other brand, maybe that puts a little more in the favor of the rear mount mower. But it's, it's not easy to hook up a three-point attachment, even with a quick hitch, but it's certainly not easy without a quick hitch. And then you have the manual PTO hookup. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of products, I would almost say gimmicks on the market to try to make the PTO connection easier, but quite frankly, it is what it is. Um, whereas the center mower with the deer has the auto connect, uh, Kubota has a drive over auto connect option. I don't know if you have to connect up the PTO shaft, I can't remember, but if you have that option, I really think that's, that's the way we would go. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful. Um, if you got more questions, leave them in the comments section below. We'll have this mower for at least a while longer. I'm not sure how long we're going to keep it. We can always try something unique again. We did not yeah. try it on the ditch bank. Um, we may want to try that at a later time. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Christy.